Salamilano Asian Film Festival was founded in 2013. Um, it was initially named as the Salamilano International Film Festival. Because we had um, films coming from different parts of the globe. We had uh, a very heavy European contingent during our first edition. Um, but uh, through the years, we tried to refine the identity of the, of the festival. And in 2015, we decided that it was best to focus on Asian cinema. That's why Salamindanao International Film Festival became Salamindanao Asian Film Festival. And um, through, uh, through the years, we also had a lot of um, uh, innovation, things happening in Salamindanao that is not really that popular across uh, film festivals and even film communities. Uh, as a, a matter of fact, uh, I think this is one of the few festivals in which the main competition or the Asian competition uh, features feature length films and short films. And these films buy against one another for the coveted Golden Durian Prize. So in Salamina, no, we do not, um, we do not um, delineate between feature film and you know, a short film. We treat film as film and you know, uh, we give merit, we award the best uh, film award or the Golden Durian Prize to the film that we feel that is the best in, in, that, in, in, in any year's competition. And uh, truth be told, during the first year, that we decided that uh, we have international shorts and features or Asian shorts and features na, um, uh, the first best film uh, during that time was a short film from Nepal uh, uh, called um, uh, Dadia, uh, which premiered in Venice before it was screened in Salamindano. So, um, uh, we, we, we realize that, you know, uh, film is film. Uh, if a short film from Nepal can beat other big uh, feature films from other parts of Asia, and I think we, we are on the right track. Um, so, um, Salamino Asian Film Festival is unlike the other regional film festivals in the country uh, because we are more focused on developing uh, very unique voices in cinema. When I say unique voices, these are films that capture uh, or reflect the Southeast Asian spirit or even Asian spirit in, in general. And uh, we're catered towards really providing a platform for them to be known, uh, to form a critical discourse uh, on these films. Um, so uh, somehow, Salamina uh, now is more of an advanced uh, festival. Uh, unlike other festivals, especially regional film festivals of Bansa, anybody can submit their films and then, uh, uh, you know, and get selected. But we're more stringent, medyo meticulous yung selection ng Salamina now. We get around 1,000 entries a year and we team that down to around 60 films. And you could just imagine how we do it and the amount of debates that uh, that, uh, that's happening during the selection time. So, uh, yun, um, yun yung gusto namin gawin. That, you know, it's, it's, we, it's not enough, because we believe that it's not enough that young people are making films. We also believe that young people should make better films, should challenge themselves to create films that would matter. And we are thankful that um, uh, for the last what, nine years na in existence of Salamina, we are able to really program good films that, uh, you know, uh, that have been kumaga, known in the International Film Festival circuit. And we are also instrumental, or we could see that we're instrumental in providing platform for the, yung mga, uh, the, 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 the voices of Asian cinema or voices of Southeast Asian cinema right now. So I could name a new, uh, a few, a uh, few filmmakers who started in Salamina now. For instance, um, a filmmaker from uh, Kazakhstan, uh, his name is Adil Khan Yarzunov, uh, was the first uh, recipient of the Golden Durian Prize in 2013. 
And Adil Khanna is a big name in the art house uh, uh, film circuit. His, uh, his films have gone to Venice and Cannes. And we also have uh, a Malaysian filmmaker uh, named uh, Edmund Yeo, who, whose short films also were featured in Salamina now. Until now, he, until he became big. So uh, he's a known figure in Asian cinema. So yun yung gusto namin alagaan. Uh, when you get program in Salamina now, we try as much as possible to really keep track of your career and find a way for us to support you. Uh, nangyari din sa isang Thai filmmaker yan, si Sorayos Harapapan, na yung mga short films niya uh, nagsimula sa Salamina now. And then slowly, lumaki na lumaki, nakilala siya because this Thai filmmaker has a very unique voice uh, mixing comedy and social uh, kumbaga commentary. So, um, ayun, tinulungan namin siyang uh, mag-emerge and bigyan ng bosses. And that's what we've been trying to do for the past, um, again, nine years. Salamina Law also is a festival that believes that hindi lang dapat film competition. Yun din yung karamihan sa festivals sa bansa, and I think even in other places. That a festival is just a film competition event. Uh, Salamina does not believe that it should be exclusive to this event. That's why Salamina Law has three components. The festival or, or the competition then second, we have the Minano Screen Lab. It is a workshop. It is an intensive workshop. It is a very selective workshop. Uh, uh, initially, it was just catered for Minanao and filmmakers, but we've, we've now catered to uh, filmmakers from other parts of the Philippines. And we also started to cater to Southeast Asian filmmakers um, in the break of making their own uh, or their first uh, film, first feature film. So, doon inahasa yung script nila sa Mindanao Screen Lab. And we have uh, we have very good mentors from, not only from the Philippines, but also in other parts of Asia. The third component of Salaminano is the New Durian Cinema, which is basically a film journal that discusses Southeast Asian cinema. Kasi, yun nga, um, naniniwala kami na, hindi, hindi dapat gumagawa ng gumagawa yung filmmaker. Kailangan meron ding component, meron din mga tao na nagka-create ng diskurso. Uh, especially when it comes to regional cinema or films that come from uh, other parts of countries. Uh, kasi ang regional cinema naman, hindi dan, it's not exclusive to the Philippines. Um, uh, kailangan may, nag, may merong diskurso, may, may pag-uusap, may mga ideas and theories that emerge. And that's how we are helping uh, understand regional cinema, not only in the Philippines, but also in other South, parts of Southeast Asia. Uh, Salamina has also been instrumental in, you know, having other countries accept regional cinema as a, as, as a phrase or as a byword. Because, for instance, in Indonesia, they don't, uh, uh, filmmakers outside of Jakarta, ibig sabihin, filmmakers outside of the film capital, medyo hindi sila comfortable with the word the regional cinema. Because the, the word regional con, uh, connotes like a provincia, uh, badui, uh, second best. So, ayo na ayo nila, medyo allergic sa the word the regional cinema. But when, but when Salamina explained to them that it is not that, uh, mga tagalin natin yung label sa yun, but regional cinema is another way of seeing from a very specific point of view, from a very specific vantage point. So they started to to acknowledge that, oh, tayo rin pala, since we do not come from the capital, from the film capital of our countries, iba yung pananaw natin sa mundo. And when we program, for instance, a film uh, from Indonesia, uh, a film from Jakarta, which is away from Jakarta, the capital, and it won and it won the best film in Salamina now, it created a buzz na, uh, let's let's assess and analyze what's in that film that won. What's in that film that beat all the other uh, good films from other parts of Asia? And they realized that it was because the director, uh, uh, B.W. Purban Negara, uh, tried to um, tell the story from a very unique Javan point of view. And then they realized, sila, oh, ito pala yung sinasabi ng Salamina. Now, ito yung sinasabi ni Teng na, you know, we have to acknowledge who we are and we have to acknowledge our regional voice. That's why... Uh, in the last three years, there's already an acknowledgement, a recognition 
an acceptance in Indonesian cinema circles of the world regional cinema. Hindi na sila nababaduyan when it comes to the term of regional cinema. So there's uh, there's a level of acceptance. And we also see that in other parts of South Asia right now. In Malaysia, for instance, um, palayuna ng kwan kwan lumpur yung paggawa ng pelikula. May mga fil filmmakers sa from Sabah and other parts of Malaysia. And of course, we also have that happening in Vietnam and in Thailand. So, um, yun yung gusto namin encourage. So, you know, we have uh, kailangan natin mag develop the maraming filmmakers who can tell their stories from unique points of view, from their own unique experiences, um, and, you know, to really enrich uh, cinema, uh, enrich national cinema, and even enrich uh, Southeast Asian cinema. And, um, ayun, um, despite of the pandemic, we're trying our best to come up with programs. Uh, last year, we were not able to uh, do the festival run because uh, hirap na lang gumawa ng festival because of the pandemic uh, and the lockdown and all the restrictions. So, naging, naging kwan namin, uh, naging mouthpiece namin in Durance Cinema last year. Uh, so, if, you, if you're curious about it, please go to newdurancinema.com and read um, a lot of things about Filipino cinema and Southeast Asian cinema there. So you know, nagi active last year and daming mga articles that na published last year, which uh, uh, which uh, you know, uh, uh, kumaga, uh, became kind of naging uh, namin na uh, yun yung way namin to to participate in in um, cinema. Uh, and luckily last year, Salamina now received a grant from the Film Development Council of the Philippines, as well as the Japan Foundation to produce an omnibus film on the pandemic. So what we did was we identified 12 filmmakers from all over Southeast Asia. Uh, and then we also, um, uh, since the money came from the Japan Foundation, we also had to identify one um, Japanese filmmaker. So all of them like uh, documented their lives for a span of a month. Uh, and sabi ko nga, ayoko maging documentary yung Pelikula. So the filmmakers were also free to explore uh, and then imagine how the pandemic affect them. So may mga, may mga filmmakers na iba yung take dun sa, sa, sa experience ng pandemic. So um, after a month, all the footages were assembled by Jan Torres, um, one of our finest uh, directors in, in the country. And by November last year, we were able to come up with a 62-minute film called Age of Light. I would like, rather say it's an expression of Asian filmmakers uh, in the midst of the pandemic. Uh, so yun yung isa sa mga haraging highlight namin uh, last year, aside from the new Nudoran cinema. And this year, we're, uh, another, uh, we're thinking of another thing to do this year. Because if we, if we cannot manage to stage the festival this year, we have to do another thing uh, or another way to have our presence felt. And now we are trying to brainstorm that. Hopefully, um, maging mas okay na yung conditions uh, by the end of the year because Salaminano happens in November. And kasi nakamiss din nung festival na everybody's together, everybody, uh, you know, face-to-face -face na kasama. Sabay -sabay na ng pelikula, and then they discuss it afterwards. Uh, that's why hindi sumagi sa isip namin to do a virtual edition. Because the feeling ko it defeats the, for, the, the purpose of what Salamina has established. It's a meeting of minds and a meeting of bodies at the same time. So hopefully this year uh, we will see something happening. So you mentioned your ano, new Dorian cinema. No? So, uh, this is the, ano, the, the journal no? of Southeast Asian cinema. So it has a print edition and it's also online. No? So as mentioned by uh, director, uh, Salamindanao Asian Film Festival no? uh, does not discriminate no? the sa, sa length of films. And um, to cite no? examples, uh, the the previous editions, particularly the 27th edition, had a Benilde no student film, Santanena, and another student film no from FEU, yung Touch Move. 
no under yung ano under doon sa kanilang lineup no so when you mention um Mindanao films no um it's characterized no ng tri people okay? and when you say tri people you have the the lowlanders you have the moros and then you have the lumads no or the indigenous peoples no any local make up ng 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 local films uh, making it to salamindanao um okay ang uh, aside from the main competition which is the asian competition and in the asian competition the selection committee uh, selects filipino entries na, na that we feel that should be there instead of other uh, sections. So aside from that, we also have uh, of the Philippine shorts and the Mindanao shorts. Hmm. Now, um, now uh, that there, ang Philippine shorts at the Mindanao shorts are really separate in a way. Uh, but, but, but two years ago, we start again, one of our innovation was just to come up with one, uh, with one category, that's the Philippine shorts, Ibig sabihin, kung taga, kahit taga Mindanao ka, taga Visayas ka, or taga Luzon ka, you can compete against each other. But since Alam Mindanao is based in Mindanao, and we also want to encourage uh, Mindanao filmmaking, aside from the best Filipino short, we also give the best Mindanao short from among uh, the entries of the Filipino, uh, the Filipino shorts. So the, the, the jury members are told that these are the Mindanao films in this in this category, and please choose another film, uh, the, the, or a film from this category, uh, from this selection that should be the best Mindanao film. Again, it also happened, I think, a while ago, that the, that, that the best Filipino film happened to be the best Mindanao film. So the jury, the, the jury, the jury uh, awarded the two awards to one film. So yun yung yun yung yun yung gusto namin encourage. Uh, and we also want to encourage then, kasi di ba, um, katulad ng sinabi ng uh, ni Sir, na, um, of course, we acknowledge that there are tribe people in Mindanao. There are, of course, the lowlander and settlers, and we have, of course, the Moro uh, inhabitants and the Lumad or the indigenous peoples. Pero we also want to encourage Mindanao filmmakers to tackle these three people in such a way that it's not boxed or categorized Doon sa mga nakasanayan natin na pag moro yung character, kailangan may gera. Yung may ganun. Or, di ba, uh, kung, kung lumad yung character, love story to be ito na lumad and a moro or a settler. So, so ang, ang feeling namin, there are other ways and there are other themes within these three groups of people that should be, that should be uh, discussed. Um, at yun yung in-encourage namin na Ano mo wag tayong magpa-box dun sa nakagawian, yung nakasanayan. But we also think of other ways to present these people. Otherwise, we're not we're not encouraging a good discourse. We're just repeating old ideas and old discourse about these tribe people. So, di ba? Ang dami-dami pwedeng gawin. Uh, we can even have a film about a Moro student who likes to eat chicharron. Yung mga ganong klaseng bagay. So there's, there, uh, and that eating of chicharron can be a source of conflict. It could be a dark comedy of some sort, pang Santanena or something, di ba? So gusto ko yung ganon na, na pagtingin sa Mindanao. And, um, kasi, aside from that, there's also this, di ba, parang category of regional. Pag, kailangan, pag sabi mo regional films, kailangan gito itsura niya. Uh, at hindi naman kailangan ganun yung itsura ng regional film because a regional film can be anything yun din yung yun din yung parang naging assessment ko and observation ko na pag no film kailangan set in the rural areas kailangan may poverty element or may armed conflict element so sabi ko pwede, pwede naman gumawa ng no film na middle class taga city yung characters and why don't we encourage doing that kasi ang dami dami rin issues sa city na kailangan i-discuss. So, yun yung kwa namin. We, 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 when we come up with this line up, we hope that the audience or aspiring filmmakers can see that, ay, pwede palang gito yung klaseng pelikulang gawin natin. Hindi yung naisip natin about this and that. So, um, in the past few years, meron na rin konting pagbabago, which we welcome. 
uh, sa, sa pag-address ng issue. And we hope that in the future, uh, meron ding the, uh, a fresh takes on, di ba, on how Minanao should be shown to the world or to be told to the world. Looking at no the films that I have seen no uh, directed by you no yung yung napansin ko meron siyang ano parang references sa sa either uh, status of women in the society or parang may connection sa ano sa eclipse or or natural phenomenon no so what inspired you to come up with with those characters <laughs> I think kasi um, I, I I grew up in the company of women. Yung lola ko, yung nanay ko, yung yaya ko, yung sister ko. Uh, so these are very influential figures in my life. So uh, it's it's but natural that that my, my, my films would gravitate towards um, women's issues and uh, characters that are women. Uh, so ayun, um, uh, in my first film, Limbunan, for instance, it's about a arranged marriage uh, between uh, Ayesa and a guy she doesn't know or she doesn't like. Uh, and of course, there are other women around her who inform her decision making. Because um, when I was young, I saw how women were also part of decision making. So, hindi totoong um, walang karapatan at walang boses yung kababaihan in Muslim society. As a matter of fact, they're very much active in the decision making, in especially in 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 family uh, life. Sila yung malaking boses uh, doon. Nakita ko rin syempre yung how how women uh, in 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 society in Maguindanao or more society yung how they are treated. Uh, 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 so for instance, in my second film, Cartas de la Soledad, the character of Rachma there, uh, yung housemaid, nagi uh, housemaid siya because uh, kung siya, uh, uh, nilagi siya dun sa bahay ng datu because nirape siya ng kapatid niya. Which is kind of weird. Kasi bakit siya yung pinanish to become a servant? When, di ba, dapat nga yung lalaki ang, ang pinanish kasi yun naman yung ng rape. And why... Kasi in, in 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 traditional Muslim society, pag yung babae nakipag sexual relationship with a brother or a father or a very close kin, kinukuha siya to serve the leader of the the place. So nakita ko yun kasi even when I was growing up, we had servants na yun yung kanilang backstory. So all these people in my in my growing up years somehow yung kanila mga kwento nag stick to me. Uh, so yun uh, when you when you watch my films the walang character doon na totally alien to me. Uh, the films or the characters are somehow influenced or are uh, kumaga are taken from real people. And if, uh, of course uh, then um I'm also drawn to nature because uh, as a Maguindanao, as a as a uh, when I was growing up, malaki yung references sa nature. Uh, especially yung lola ko would tell me that you know uh, when you hear this, ibig sabihin may mga references for instance, especially uh, sabi pang, I remember ko when I was growing up, I was told na um, if you want to know if it's going to rain or not tonight. You, li- you should listen to the sound of the toko. Yung, di ba yung toko? Because that toko can predict the weather. So, kahit hanggang ngayon, yung nakakarini ko yung toko, kinikon ko, pinipredict yung weather based on yung kanyang sound. So, somehow, daladala ko, even up to now, yung mga ganong klase yung paniniwala. And, of course, not sure lang na, na even, yung, even yung cinema ko would be influenced by that type of of thinking. Uh lalong lalo na dun sa sa yung pelikulang dinidevelop ko ngayon uh yung Faramanis which is basically a um, Mindanao retelling of the Elias at Salome story. So you could just imagine diba si Elias at Salome nasa hut sila in a in a middle of a forest by the river. So imagine what things can happen there that can take on some supernatural element or somehow influenced by nature. So yun, again, 
informed by all these ideas when I was growing up, I use it as a like a background to develop yung Paramanese. Okay, no. So since you mentioned no yung yung growing up years, no, uh, it's fortunate no for the new generation that we now have the digital technology. So we have a wealth of new uh, films no coming from Mindanao. When we were younger, I'm assuming we're almost the same age, right? <laughs> mm. We were younger, no. Uh, Muslims no are portrayed as antagonists, no. We're portrayed as antagonists, no in in local films no mas action films no ang mga genre mm. na na merong role no yung mga yung mga Muslims pero if you uh, look further no yung yung isa sa mga na, na discover no na old films yung Sambuanga mm. ay no na, na, yes. really available siya sa FDCP channel no which i showed the students earlier no uh, ano siya it's about Minda and Danao no so para oh. Mas legend. Love story. Uh, love story. So, yun, no? Mm -hmm. uh, and as mentioned then yun, yun differences then Kasi in the Bangsamoro uh, Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, if I'm not mistaken, meron kayong 13 ethno-linguistic na groups, no? And if you look at the whole Mindanao, no? So, kung meron ka ng 13 from BARM or the uh, Bangsamoro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao, if you'll add the other regions no 9 to 12 and the others no um clear yung mga differences nila and this also led to a lot of other film festivals no you have uh ngilnig in davao mas horror ba yon yeah it's a genre film uh, film festival and so horror magic uh, fantasy mga ganun oh. ano bangsamoro no last year ba yon yung bangsamoro film festival no and then you mm -hmm. have uh, uh, the the ano the school based no na na film festivals no yung sine animo and sine de oro and then you also have uh, film festivals sa Sambuanga na ano mas more on peace ba yon ano na yung naging improvement no don sa sa the quality of films coming from Mindanao uh, okay um, I think uh... There are like 11 film festivals in the in Mindanao recognized by either NCC or FDCP. So ganun karami 11. Um yun din yung kuna, yun din yung danger na pag maraming film festivals, you just keep repeating things. Wala kang, di ba? Hindi ka gumagawa ng festival kasi may naiisip kang bago that will develop filmmaking. Yun yung always fear na men na dumadami kami pero para kaming replication lang nagre-replicate ay kasi doon sa doon sa Davao may festival eh tayo dapat may festival din so may ganung klase mentality yung other festivals but luckily uh, tama ka nga na uh, festivals in Mindanao somehow meron ding uh, meron ding kumbaga uh, pagtingin doon sa pagpapalawak and the development of uh, Mindanao cinema which, uh, diba, instead of just replicating the festivals, uh, nag-isip sila ng ways, like, why don't we become thematic? Uh, Cinepass, for instance, would cater to peace, film, peace films or mm -hmm. films that deal with conflict or films that, uh, films that deal with love. So, yun yung, yun yung, yun yung, kung yun yung dinidevelop nilang klaseng pelikula. And Ngilngig, for instance, cater to to films na horror, fantasy, and magic. So, ngayon, ang Minano filmmakers are striving to make good fantasy horror films and, you know, magic realist films. And, again, the type of training is very specific to those types of films. So, kung, kung for instance, uh, attend ka ng workshop sa Mjungig, you'll not expect na tuturoan ka to make films like just any other film. But you're going to be trained to do specific film that you want to do a uh, genre film and horror film. So yun, kahit paano, yun yung malaking ambag kahit paano nung, nung, uh, nung diversity uh, ng Mindanao. And of course, everybody looks up to sa Mindanao uh, when it comes to how filmmakers should play with aesthetics, you know, finding their voices and, you know, uh, uh, making their films more Kumbaga, uh, challenging. Uh, uh, so, 
Maganda rin kasi kami dito sa Mindanao, yung mga film festivals, uh, napaka-collegial, napaka-friendly namin sa isa't isa. Uh, isa sa factors, based, uh, one of the factors is because uh, a lot of the festival directors from other parts of Mindanao were my students. So kahit pa paano naging influential ako at yung Salamina now in honing them and you know, having these ideas. Uh, yun, yung, yun, yung, yun yung nakikita kong uh, uh, malaking improvement ngayon. Uh, and of course, uh, we hope that it continues in the future. Uh, and then, oh, mag, importante rin kasi mag-open up din yung Minanao to like Manila filmmakers. Kasi for a while, parang meron na yung pagka-exclusivist na kung Minanao Film Festival dapat ang trainers lang si Tema Hansakan, si Bagani Fiolo. But now, for instance, last December, we, the, we had a festival run in Tagayan de Oro in which Antoinette Hadaone was the mentor of the workshop. So gusto ko yung kanong klaseng pag-evolve pag na, you know, uh, thinking that, oh, pwede, we can, we can ask these people because we can still learn from these people. Okay, yung mga ganong uh, bagay. And I guess with the pandemic then, uh, since nauso na rin yung online workshops, uh, dati kasi ang hirap pag-workshop, kung gusto mo kumuha ng isang Japanese or kumuha ka ng isang Singaporean or Thai na, na lecture, parang, di ba, isipin mo pa yung gastos na yung pamasahe and accommodation uh, kasi dadali mo sa Pilipinas. But now, you can do it online. So, mas, bala, mas nagiging malawak yung, yung, yung experience ng mga bata, yung mga aspiring filmmakers. Learning from all these uh, established filmmakers from around Asia or even other parts of the world. How was the experience working no? in, in a setup na you got a grant no, from Metro Manila as compared to the films you produce on your own? Okay. Um, I think sa seven na films na nagawa ko, isa lang doon yung pelikulang hindi Manila yung grant. I, uh, Obscure Histories was made uh, because of money from Sherrod Anthony Sanchez, another Mindano filmmaker, and myself all together. All the other films were made via grants from Manila. Cinemalaya, Cinema One, Q Cinema, uh, and then FDCP. Okay, uh, uh, two of my films were, were done because of Cinema Cinema One. Of, uh, uh, may isa pa pala kong pelikulang hindi Manila nag-produce, which was Daughters of a Digital Banner, yung Kisu. It was crowdfunded. Um, um, I, uh, I advise ko kasi sa mga aspiring filmmakers, if you really want to get grants, uh, di ba? Uh, it's really to write compelling stories and screenplays and being able to defend that in a committee. Kasi, kasi sa Cinema Life, for instance, after mo ma-preselect, after you get shortlisted, you have to undergo a panel interview. And then, and then kung talagang igagrill ka nung, kung hindi masyado, kung wala sa mood yung mga members of the committee, they will really grill you. Ganun din nangyari sa akin sa other, like Cinema One, ginrill ako ng mga members of committee. So basically, what they do is really to grill you, even to rattle you, para malaman nila kung how much mastery of the material do you have. So ako kahit na magsas nagsasabay-sabay silang magsipag magsipagtanungan kasi ginagawa ko strategy ni eh, sabay-sabay just to confuse you but I was still man, I was I was still able to answer all their questions. And yun yung kailangan mo kahit na ginugulo ng utak mo, alam mo alam mo isasagot mo because that's how they assess you. Okay, mukhang si ganito mastered na yung material kasi 'di ba? Um, nasasagot na lahat ng tanong kahit na uh, kinu-confuse na natin siya. So, yun yung, yun yung akin. Because when I, when I write a screenplay, which I basically pitch for a grant, I make sure that this story is very clear in my mind. Because how can you how can you impart a certain clarity to other people? Kung sa'yo mismo as a writer, as a director, hindi clear sa utak mo yung kwento mo. So, yun yung first advice ko. Be clear about what you want to say. Because kung tatanungin ka ng, ng producer, founder, or these grants, hindi mo masagot. Parang, kung hindi clear sa iyo, bakit maging clear sa amin? So be very clear about that. Uh, and just because of that, I was able to make films that feature not only Mindanao actors, but also Manila actors. I had Ted Chagbayani, katulang ang sabi ni Seymour. 
And I also had Felix Rocco and Jasmine Dos, so all these stars from Manila. And it, it's, for me, kasi, important that you have stars from Manila because dahil kila sila, yung pelikula mo magkakaroon din ng con, like um, a recognition because when, they, when people rec- see your film, they recognize familiar faces. So kahit pa paano, well, like screening in cinema Laya or screening in cinema one, mas madaling, mas palatable sa Manila audience na meron silang kilala dun sa, sa napapadulong pelikula. Um, ang naging, kumbaga, naging take away namin sa pag-hire ng Manila actors is that a lot of mga uh, actors also learn from 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 them. So proud of, for instance, napaka matulungin niya na artista. So tuturuan ni mga kaeksena niya at even yung hindi na kaeksena from Mindanao. So daming ang daming baon, daming na iuwi mga Mindanao uh, actors because this Manila actors are very generous. Teche Bayani, for instance, napaka generous sa pagtuturo sa mga Mindanao um actors how to deliver lines and how to project themselves in a, in a, in a in a frame in a scene so um yun um siguro lucky lang ako kasi so far wala pa akong na direct na manila actor na sumakit yung ulo ko lahat uh, lahat naging friendly perhaps siguro kasi when I scout an actor from manila i ask other people other producers or other directors na katrabaho ng actor na yun o kumusta si ganyan pag sinabing um, ingat ka doon na kasi masakit sa ulo yun sa set. So pag ganun, medyo okay. Um, hindi siya priority list sa aking gustong maging actor. So, so far, yeah, uh, live, I don't know, uh, Manila actors have been very good to us and they've been very supportive. Uh, as a matter of fact, may mga pelikula akong hindi nagpapabayad yung mga Manila actors. Mm-hmm. They just love working with me and they just love contributing to the de- development of Mindanao cinema. Uh, uh, so, yun. Uh, happy ako na, na may ganung klaseng malasakit na, na, you know, uh, na ganun din mag-isip yung mga Manila actors na, you know, gustong umangat din yung Mindanao cinema. But your experience, no, is different from another uh, Mindanao filmmaker's experience, no, in a grant-giving body na uh, particular yung kay direct Arnold Mardocchio, no, na, na he ended up uh, casting no Feginging Hyde no from Mindanao tapos it was rejected no by the by the grant giving body no kaya kaya rin naman he decided to pull out the film no mm. from that particular film festival and later on it won no uh, in the Gawad Urian no parang redemption for our uh, for direct Arnold Mardock no so uh, can we go personal dun sa iyong ano sa yung background uh, sige, sige. Uh, no so uh, may inskip kasi ako na isang sentence no from the profile of uh of Datu Gutierrez tang mga sakan the second no yung chewing familial obligations and politics he chose the subversive pathway and became an artist which is to his people's minds just a pretty euphemism for being a bomb. No? So ito kasi yung, ano, yung, yung background na your grandfather or great-grandfather ba? Your My grandfather. One of the ano, leading figures no, dun sa Muslim independent movement or formerly Mindanao independent movement. No? So, so dun nga, no? so if if you're coming from that line no, of Datu, so is it appropriate to call you a Datu also? And how did your family act no, when you decided to be an artist, a filmmaker, and at the same time, a, an author, no, a, a, a writer? Uh, basically, because my, 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 especially my father, my father is very pragmatic because when he was a career, uh, a career a government official, so he started, uh, he started from, you know, uh, from zero until he became a and an under secretary of education so para sa kanya very very traditional in a, in a way sabi ko very pragmatic na um mas iniisip niya yung tra- isang trabaho na magtatagal ka at matag- matagal yung benefit sa iyo diba government of course diba hanggang retirement mo may sasweldohin ka so parang my father wanted me to enter government service or even uh, you know kasi sabi niya if kumangat ka uh, alam mo yun, there's a security for you. 
And when he, when we, he learned that I didn't want to enter government service, I wanted to become a filmmaker. Medyo konsyala, I he was very concerned about me. And in, in previous conversations, he'd always kumbaga, try his best to, um, alam mo yun, i-erase sa utak ko na gusto kong maging filmmaker. Um, so parang, okay, so anak, paano yung, so paano ka, how would you be able to sustain yourself? Bigla siyang gaganon ganon ng tanong. Pero siguro later na, alam niyang, uh, talagang ayokong ayokong mag government service so he, he relented and sige bahala ka na sa bahala ka na it was my mother who was actually kind of mas kwansya mas mas giving mas mas bukas yung kalooban at tanggapin na I really wanted to make art I wanted to become a, a filmmaker an artist uh, for for many many reasons then um, my mother was a mayor for 13 years so parang sa kanya uh, hindi rin maganda kasi yung experience as mayor. Uh, she was mayor during the martial law era. So parang to, 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 to shield us from the hardships of politics, parang wala rin siya in-encourage yung mga anak niya na mag- maging politician. It was actually my aunts and my uncles, yung mga kapatid na nanay ko, who said, sige, sinong magsasaksida na nanay mo kundi ikaw? Yung mga ganong klaseng, ganong klaseng mga talk. So, uh, so, uh, kung magasabi ko, I really wanted to chart a name for myself that is kind of different from what my family has established. My grandfather being the governor of Cotabato uh, for for many, many years. For I think it was from 1945 to 1968. So, may gap lang in between. So, he was governor for a very long period. And when I say Cotabato, it was the big Cotabato before. It was called the Cotabato Empire. The Cotabato Empire is now divided into five different provinces. So you just imagine how big it was. And then, of course, my, my, my paternal grand uncle happened to be a senator uh, and, you know, uh, a speaker of the House of Representatives, si, si Kwan, si Senator Salipada Pendatun. Now, yung ate niya became the, uh, was the wife of, of my grandfather. So, so kumbaga, lumaki akong Ayun, politics yung nasa utak ko. Pero ako kasi, I always treat these things as sources of stories. That's why uh, ang dami kong naka-reserve na stories that are taken from this from this experience, from my from my background. As a matter of fact, my dream, my dream project is uh, a Mindanao retelling of Akira Kurosawa's run. Mm-hmm. Kasi nangyari sa, nangyari sa pamilya namin, that when my grandfather was, uh, alam niyo malapit na siyang mga matay in the 70s or the 80s, uh, yes, yeah, 70s, late 70s. Uh, he named his younger son, not really the youngest, as his successor. So yung mga elder sons, so syempre sumama ang loob, bakit yung bunso ang successor, hindi tayo. So they imagine ko, di ba ganun man kasi yung issue sa run na, yung bunsong anak ang ang ni-name na successor and then of course yung dalawang kapatid rebelled against the father to try to destroy the the bunso so may ganun din kwento sa akin sa pamilya namin so yun yung mga gitu mga kwento ganun yung effects sa akin that these are stories that I can mine for future for future films so yun um and dami and dami ang ang daming kwento ng uh, from the family and I also you know, I also re- I visit other families with the same uh, kwento. Uh, ayun, uh, madaming, madaming ganung bagay. And of course, yung uh, isa pa rin sa naka is of course, uh, siyempre as, as in, a, in a very patriarchal uh, setup, um, my, my family would want me to, to have a wife and my, a family of my own. Sabi ko, uh, sa loob-loob, how can I do that? Uh, same-sex marriage is not legal in the Philippines. So, niloko sila lang ganun. Again, it's another, it's another issue that they have to accept that uh, uh, like I am queer. You know, so, so yun. Uh, andami, kumag, andami-daming expectation sa akin na hindi ko na-fulfill because I didn't want to enter politics, because I'm queer, and, you know, uh, yun. So, may mga ganun klase ng bagay. So I also also mentioned that no because that is something that the students can relate to no so some of them uh, also had problems no with the family with the parents particularly when they chose this 
course, no, film course. So what are what were the issues that you raised, no, on the film Mindanao? Okay, um, the 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 big issue a lot of people had with Mindanao is basically um uh, the film talk about a very specific story from a very specific geography in Mindanao. So it was a story uh, from Maguindanao and then the characters in Maguindanao happened to uh, go to Davao because in Davao uh, has a, one of the biggest hospitals in the country that could cater to the predicament of Judy Ann's daughter. And yet they call it Mindanao, diba? Right? You're, it, it's it's like telling the world, it's telling the audience that this is Mindanao, this is happening in Mindanao. But in fact, it's not Mindanao. You cannot you cannot kumbaga, monopolize the experience of Mindanao by calling a film Mindanao. And you know, because people who have no idea what Mindanao is can form their opinion on Mindanao from what they see. And this is precisely you know danger no uh pelicula. And of course, this is about a specific story from a specific geographical location. Um, again, you see, uh, Brilliant didn't research well about Maguindano uh, uh, or the story of Maguindano. Kaya yung pelikula niya, it was really a hodgepodge of things. Again, stereotypes ng taga Manila about Mindanao. Di ba yung sayaw, uh, you know, uh, even ritual. So, so it was it was it was a film that tried to exoticize a lot of things about us and you know not only exoticize but mit, mit, but also misrepresented Mindanao and its people so you know naging naging contention ko um uh, yun kasi rin talaga yung danger when a filmmaker from Manila or other parts of the country or even parts of the world go to a specific place, say, to go to Manila, uh, to Mindanao to make a film and not understand what Mindanao is, its peoples, its cultures. No? Y- yung, alam mo yun? Uh, magagagal sa information from somebody who thinks that he knows about Mindanao. But, you know, he just knows all these generic things about Mindanao. Um, and, of course, what you can produce with that type of research, if you may call it research, or that knowledge, is again, a misrepresentation of, of, of Minano and its peoples. You know, if you really want to know about Minano, know the stories of Minano, you stay here in Minano, uh, somehow. And hindi pwedeng excuse na mahal, malayo, or alam mo yun, uh, dangerous. Kasi if you're bent to make a film on Minano, you have to accept the reality surrounding that production, that creation. And may mga pelikula naman about Mindanao na hindi taga Mindanao yung director and yet they ka- came out with very good uh, stories. For instance, Francis Passion's Buaya, diba? Cinema, it's, a, it's a cinema life I, a film. Um, because Passion really stayed with the community in in in, Agu- in Agusan Marsh. So nakakapture na yung, yung, yung sentimento at pag-isip ng mga taga 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 mga manobo dun dun sa area so pwedeng gawain kung alam mo if you as a filmmaker alam mong kailangan mo ng tamang preparasyon so there's no i really don't see any excuse for sloppy work especially right now that di ba or sabi natin before the pandemic that may piece of fair naman to come to Mindanao and do, do your research so there are many ways to know the culture of Mindanao from the people themselves. So filmmakers should be able to explore those opportunities to know uh, about Mindanao. There's a film that it's set in Maguindana. So the producers of the film, knowing better, uh, asked me to sit down with the director and the writer para ma, ma- flesh out at ma- 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 maayos yung script. And I was so brutal about the assessment of the script. So I, I really don't care kung masaktan yung si director or si writer for as long as I'm honest and sincere about what I want them to, to know. Kasi that's the only way to know to know about, about Mindanao, to hear it from Mindanao and to get real honest assessment. Hindi, kasi ang, ang naging problema rin, you know, uh, 
at ito yung napansin ko that you know uh, when a Manila filmmaker comes to Mindanao gagawin ng pelikula sa Cotabato for instance instead yung mga taga Cotabato tulungan si filmmaker na makagawa ng makabuluhan at makatotohan ng kwento na overwhelm sila ng sense of validation that can come up with that film sinaselebrate agad yung film not knowing what type of film is going to come out. So, hindi pwedeng hayaan mo ng ganun yung filmmaker. Kailangan mo rin na mabigay ng bosses na alam mo yung mag-ground dun sa filmmaker. And I, I guess there are enough people around Minanao who can who can actually do that and advise na Minanao and filmmakers to to do that. We came from the talk no of of Direct Kit and Direct Crempton no, about Binisaya Film Festival and they they were able to ano eh, to at least uh, qualify no the the films uh, competing in the Binisaya or at least being shown no in the Binisaya Film Festival as uh, parang mas ano sila mas more on humor yung mga films nila mm. so do you have no mga ano ba general na characteristics or qualities if i would ask you how would you characterize a Mindanaoan film Uh, I think it's it's wala eh ang iyan ang maganda sa Cebuano films especially the the Cebuano films of late uh, kay Renton kay Keith kay Victor Villanueva they're really characterized by a very specific or a very peculiar peculiar Cebuano humor uh, kaya tamang sabihin nila na na alam mo yun uh, ang binisaya ay may humor. Uh, but with, but with, with Mindanao, it's really... Condene, eh, uh, may mga pelikula naman na humorous, pero marami rin pelikula na of supernatural uh, uh, tawag ito, uh, temperament. Uh, meron din mga love stories, meron din uh, about armed conflict. Uh, so halo-halo when it comes to Mindanao. Uh, uh, which is very good kasi ibig sabihin nun, ang ibig sabihin lang noon uh, uh, tao dito uh, uh, ibang iba yung experiences sa mga tao but when it comes to established Minano directors uh, di ba si Sharon ako si Arnel um, si Sherad si Bagani and to an extent Lab Diaz um, ang mga pelikula namin mababa, mababagal talaga for for uh, uh for for a reason and th- i'm actually developing a, a a story about that an article for Nudurian cinema that's the slow uh, the, the long take aesthetics of binano cinema um kasi diba um kung meron ka mang makitang commonality sa binano films ay may, may tendency to be very slow and of course uh, love dies already explain why his films are slow. Ang sabi niya, yun yung kinalakhan niya sa Mindanao. Uh, because uh, Love Diaz and I ka- come from Maguindanao. So, nabuhay siyang medyo mabagal yung buhay. That's why it's reflected on how uh, and how he makes his films. Ako, in a conversation with a member of the Manunuri, si Tito Valiente, uh, I, I told him in a forum during Cinema Rion in Nabunturan, um, uh, kasi pinapa-explain kami ng aesthetics namin and I, siguro sa sobrang sa, so, sa dami ng pwede ko explain I, I identified yung tendency ko to have the camera kind of distant sa subject di ba may ganun akong tendency di ba hindi, hindi ko hilig na nag-close up or lumalapit yung camera sa subject ko so there's always this distance and I I, I I attributed it to the fact that when I was growing up, surrounded by all these people, you know, loko, manalay ko when it was me, or, and since kami na mga bata, hindi pwede manghimasok or pumasok sa kwento ng matatanda, we, kung gusto mo na yung makinig, there should be this distance. And somehow, when I was starting filmmaking, when I made my first film, for instance, um, I always maintain this respectful distance from my subject so that I let them be the from the bida 
uh, the center of it all. I told them that I think that's the reason my camera work is like that. And of course, other Bilano filmmakers have the reasons why their films are slow. And ayun, um, yun yung commonality na kikita ko, and I think it's a commonality that that needs to be studied uh, uh, among uh, Minano, Minanawan filmmakers. Diverse din, eh, uh, lumalabas ngayon, especially the young filmmakers right now na hindi pa rin nakakagawa ng first feature length nila. Nakita namin yung uh, diversity ng which brings me to the last point no yung recent na Bangsamoro Film Festival kasi you had a video na lecture mm. or parang some sort of a sermon no to yes. the to the to the Bangsamoro uh, filmmakers oh. no from the first bayon first Bangsamoro Film Festival ba yan? yes what happened no during the judging or what happened na, as a reaction ba nung nung young filmmakers the suggestion okay ito yung importante talaga no uh, uh importante talaga uh, especially in this visual culture in this in this new world na ginagalaw in this digital culture that film that young people really need to watch a lot of things diba hindi yung ay kasi trip ko lang talaga ang Korean novela Korean novela lang panoorin ko you have to expose yourself to a lot of things uh total andyan na yung andyan na yung platform andyan na yung technology kasi if you do expo, expose yourself to a lot of things na lilimitahan yung understanding ninyo of what cinema could be and that was precisely what happened in that festival because in the barm areas, of course, wala naman sila alam sa different types of cinema. Kung mag- what they're fed are Korean novellas, uh, Korean films, even maalala mo kaya, yung mga ganong klaseng uh, influence sa kanila. So when they saw films that didn't fit into their definition of a film, nag- sila, they, they, they argue that it's not a film. So it was basically something that we sense was a mission of the festival to educate aspiring filmmakers from the Bangsamoro or even the audience of the Bangsamoro of the of the diversity of cinema kasi hindi pwedeng hindi pwedeng alam mo yun uh, magi-limited sila uh, the second the second the second issue that needs to be answered is that yung di ba um I think it it, it 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 comes from yung paniniwala rin kasi ng 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 ng, ng Bangsamoro that they're courageous, valiant and they're unconquered. So meron silang kind of sense of entitlement in a way or a sense of kanang like a privilege na na parang sila lang yung, sila lang yung tama. Uh, and uh, hindi sila Kumbaga, hindi sila fair no, knowing that a festival is a competition they do not play uh, they do not play fairly they would undertake things that they think that will put them in a good advantage they would do kumbaga, dirty things even that will that they think would give them a better advantage compared to the others sisira nila for instance yung ibang ibang films uh, they will complain to the festival of this and that. Uh, ito, they violated this criteria, they violated this regulation. So lahat ng pwede ipintas, pipintasan nila, hoping that pagpintasan yung isang pelikula, gaganda yung pelikula nila. And that what is one thing I also pointed that, you know, you have to remember that, you know, cinema is a very fluid thing, you know. So, and you know, um, if you want to develop yourself as a filmmaker you you know you 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 also have to accept that this is a competitive world diba? Uh, so be open to competition be open to criticism even so uh, ayun yung ayun kung merong hinaharap yung Bangsamoro film community yun yun kailangan ding kailangan i-address yun uh, otherwise feeling ko nga baka diba hindi hindi na na na, na, na achieve yung purpose of film uh, festival kung talagang ganun mag-isip. And I also think kasi Seymour sobrang laki ng prize 
So baka di ba parang they really want to ah. get that prize. Kaya, because you know, it's a short film competition and then the, the, the best film is a half a million. So wow. di ba uh, in terms of sustainability in itong film festival, if you cannot produce that big amount of a prize, they may lose interest in joining. So parang sabi ko it was it was something that ano mo hindi natin sure kung it will work to the festival's advantage in the future because since government kasi government supported festival siya hindi mo naman ma-sure na the government will always support it they will support it siguro in the future but they will support it in a in another way hindi mo bibigay ng kalahating million for a, for for the best film so again it's it's a matter of fine tuning again uh how to really develop filmmakers and develop the film scene in Mindanao. Oh, that's something different, ano? Short film festival yan, ano? Mm-mm. 500,000 pesos ang price. Tapos, and then even yung, mga, even yung mga other prizes, grand jury prize, ganun din, 200,000, di ba? And then yung may consolation prize of 50,000, and then yung mga other categories, may 50,000. So, ano yung parang it was it was really a, like a money making venture for them so you know maganda kasi di ba may pera sila pero to yun ang nasa utak nila na I'm, I'm going to make this film kasi gusto ko lang ng pera something kailangan kailangan ayusin ayusin doon kasi it's not it, it, that money should not be the only drive for you to make a film uh, we had this discussion or series of discussions no, in film cult just to give no the <laughs> the students the film students sa background no yung diversity ren uh, i'm i hope no hindi hindi lang korean novela yung exposure nyo sana hindi uh, nakapanood na kayo before na experimental film baka ang background niya lang ay ano mainstream no cinema tapos kapag ka pinagawa ang student ng short film yung mainstream film i-compress niya lang parang ganun lang yung kanyang comprehension so kung ganun yung comprehension ng teacher malamang ganun din yung comprehension ng ng students no so this is something good na rin sa film cult kasi we get to invite no filmmakers from different regions different provinces and they introduce us not to their uh, way of life culture nga and also the the background no not only the history but also the the characteristics no of the films coming from them, no? Any other advice that you can give, no, to this young filmmakers in our Benil class? Yes, because uh, this is basically a film and culture uh, subject. Um, you know, uh, of course, it's it's important to acknowledge that that film is informed by the culture that it represents, diba? So. It, it's also informed by the culture the filmmaker uh, grew up with, diba? So kung ano yung, kung ano yung diba, values ko sa filmmaker, mag inform din yun sa paggawa ko ng kwento. So, importante always to see films as part of the growth, development, and even the manifestation of a certain culture. Uh, uh, but again, ang caveat dito, ang, or ang, ang aking advice lang is that you do not take a film uh, as though konsha wholly representative of a certain culture just because it's about Mindanao or di ba, uh, kailangan din ng critical thinking yung audience to really assess if this is real or this represents something or this is even valuable to you uh, in, a, in, a, in a universal level, uh, being human, being Filipino, di ba? Kasi madami, madaming, madaming, madami tayong pwede matutunan sa pelikula uh, sa pag ng kultura ng ibang tao. For instance, pag ng Mindanao. But again, this film is just a window. If you really want to understand cultures, if you really want to understand Mindanao, or Visayas, or even sabi natin the Cordilleras, you talk to people from there because that's, that's the best way and if you can save money if you can you know if you're financially capable hopefully after the pandemic you visit these places because there's a lot about these places 